Hey guys, what's up? This is JT with Yak Gadget, and what I have here are all of the pieces for our quick scope front facing sonar mount. So, this is the latest version. We'll go through a couple of things, but mainly this video is to give you instructions on how to put it together and how to successfully install your front facing sonar transducer to it. So we'll kind of get into it and then kind of explain the pieces along the way. The, the main piece is your pole that it comes with. Now I'll give you a 40 inch shaft that it comes with. I've already chopped mine down and I'm gonna explain kind of how easy it is to do that. One thing you're gonna notice when you get your pole is you're gonna see a hole um, that's already in the bottom. Actually, it's right here. And that is for mounting this piece right here, which is a collar that goes over it that has a side plate. And this side plate has been changed now to accommodate all of your uh, transducer uh, pieces, like whether it's uh, the active target or a live scope. Uh, I'm gonna be installing a live scope since I have a live scope now that I'm gonna be using this mount myself for. But this hole right here, so you don't wanna trim, you don't wanna trim the part of the shaft that has this hole. You wanna trim the other side um, and you can just trim it down to whatever. I took about a foot off the pipe uh, roughly, so mine, I guess that math would end up being around 28 inches, which is going to be perfect for me, and I'm mounting it on uh, primarily on a new canoe unlimited. Um, I'm going to be taking it back and forth from a U10 to a U12, so I'm designing my system to be portable to allow me to do that. So, so if you're going to trim it, trim it from the top part, and the top part is the part that doesn't have any pre-drilled holes in it. The bottom part has a pre-drilled hole, so you don't want to cut this part. You want to cut the other side to chop it. And you can use a chop saw. You can use, I actually have a PVC pipe cutter that I got for like, I don't know, like seven, eight bucks uh, at my hardware store, and that works, works like a champ. So you have that. So the first thing we're going to do is actually install this side piece. So... This is the piece now, and again, we have extended plate to accommodate active target because it's it's a um, it's a longer piece. Um, so either active target or a live scope. And again, I'm doing live scope. So and it already has some pre-drilled holes in it. So all I want to do is put this on the bottom of of this pole like that, and I want to line up the holes where you can see the light coming through, and then we include. A carriage bolt that will then go through okay so now that's through so what this does is that locks on now caution before you do this you want to mount I would mount my piece and when you get your live scope it's gonna come with a clamp that goes on a uh, on a trolling motor. Well, as you can see, this uh, the thickness of this pipe is much thicker than the trolling motor shaft, trolling motor shaft, so it won't fit on there. So that's why we designed this plate for this piece to mount onto there. So you take this this piece, just a side piece that you connect your fish finder to, and that is going to be you can now flat mount that onto that plate. And as you can see, I've positioned mine. Um, to the lower to the lower side and to the to the far corner of it and the reason for that is uh, When you put the transducer on and when the electric cord comes up I just want to basically have it to where the cord isn't sticking all the way out And we have another trick that we're going to show you how to run the cord up through the pipe as well And that's why we use such a large pipe is to accommodate the electrical head so this right here will mount like that. And then once you mount that onto it and you have your transducer, before you put uh, the bolt through the shaft, you're gonna wanna run your head up there. Or if you plan on drilling a hole from the side, then you can drill a hole from the side, then it won't matter. In my case, I'm gonna put a hole in the side to be able to run the electrical head up through. So, I put the carriage bolt in, you have a nut that comes with it, you put the nylock nut on the other side, then you can tighten that down. And now that side piece, once you tighten that down, it'll be installed. 
So now I'm gonna take the base and I'm just gonna basically insert, I'm gonna twist that to the side and I'm gonna insert this through. And I'm just gonna clap that down. And so now I'm ready to put some of these top pieces on. Okay, so let me explain what this is. So you'll see this ring. This is what we call a spacer ring. The reason why we have it is, this is gonna rest on here. So this is gonna go over here. It's gonna rest. Now the reason why I have it there to rest is this is the tension collar that, um, that you can adjust the height of the pole, okay? You notice it has a knob here to make for easy adjustment. In order for the knob to clear to be able to steer this pole 360, you need some space in between uh, this and that and, and the base here so that it doesn't uh, stop your progression. So, so you have that spacer collar for that reason. So now I'm gonna put this on. I should have it loose enough. Let me see. All right, so now that's gonna go down there like that. And now I can tension this down. And again, you can adjust this and then, and then change the height and then just change the tension. Now, one of the things also to keep in mind too is you kind of notice if you bring this up and change it, this, this can kind of wiggle free and make a noise. Uh, one of our customers pointed that out. You do have the option of drilling like a little hole using like a number eight screw, maybe uh, an inch and a half or inch and a quarter screw. This is only three quarter six, so I think an uh, inch and a quarter would do well. But get get one that's about an inch and a quarter long, uh, drill, drill a little hole, uh, countersink it if you want, and then you can actually screw this, uh, this spacer to it, and you want it to be flat here again so you don't have any resistance when you turn that around. That way that keeps that slap. For me, the way that I use it, I, I don't know if that's really gonna be a problem for me, so I'm just gonna leave it as is for right now. So this is what it should look like so far. Now we're gonna put this top handle. Now this is a recent change on this. Uh, we now make it as a single piece. Before we had it kinda like this, where it was like a clamp. And we had some issues with it with it breaking just a couple of times, so we went and decided to nip it in the bud and have this to where you could um, just screw this directly into the pipe. Now, I've already kind of pre-screwed mine in, so I've got to line my holes up. However, you want to use like uh, less than a 1 8 inch uh, bit. I would probably use uh, something like a 3 32nd bit or even a little bit smaller than that. And just pre um, and just pre drill your holes, and then these screw these are blunted screws, and they should go right in and and line right up. So again, the reason why I did that because now this is solid, and it's never you know you're not going to break this. However, if you want this to be removable, so you could slide your pole uh, on and off, take it off easy, I suggest that you just use a quarter inch. Um, drill bit, drill a hole through, and kind of do the same thing we did here where you just run a carriage bolt uh, through it. And that way um, you could put a, a knob or a wing nut on the other side and make it easily to remove. Uh, we decided not to do that just because, um, just to accommodate different people's taste. And I, th I feel like this is a, a more solid solution. But we'll get this handle on and get it screwed on. And then we'll kind of show you how that looks from that point. Okay, so now I've got this screwed on to the uh, to the post. Now, when I when I set this up, you, you notice you had the arrow, and the arrow is supposed to be pointing wherever the sonar is facing. So, in order to achieve that, you want you want this lined up with your plate. So your plate, your side, so your side plate here, this side plate, you want it basically parallel. I, I like to look at it like this. You want it on the same side facing the screw. So if your screw is basically lined up with that, then you know your arrow is going to be pointing that exact direction where your sonar is facing. So you just want to be mindful of that when, when you position this on before you screw and lock it down. Okay. So that, that right there. So this is how the piece should now look. And this is the, of course, this is the piece that goes onto your boat. Now I want to talk about uh, another uh, P 
piece about this. So when I designed this originally, we designed this for this to be a kick up feature. So if you hit something, this bumps and kicks it up. Now, as I've been using this and getting to know this item more, um, and you can still use it for that purpose and, and you can probably put some add-ons to it to keep it from kicking up and stuff like that when you're moving. Cause a lot of people saying, well, if we're on the boat, we're moving more than two and a half miles an hour which I don't know how you're getting a, an accurate read if you're moving much faster than that. However, I understand people want to do a drive-by sweep when they're using this. Um, personally, if I was going to be in a lot of movement, I would just flip this around and I would use it instead as a, as a kick up, as a flip up to where if I know I'm going to hit something, I can literally raise it up and then just, and just, and then crank it and crank it back and lift it up that way. Um, and that gives you an option of, and also easy to store it while you're going on the water, which is what this piece is gonna also help you do. However, so people go, well, what if I don't want it on the right side? What if I wanna flip it? Well, that's a great point. So what you can actually do is, you can actually undo these screws on the bottom, turn the plate over. We actually are pre-countersinking both sides. So now you can flip this over and then screw, um, put the screws back to screw uh, into these side posts here. And now you're installed to go on to that other side. And then I like this because when you're going down the water, this pole is is supported by this back piece. And so you can now use your fish finder no matter how fast you want to go. And you don't have to worry about it. And if you still have what I like to call those oh crap moments, you could still lift it up or pull it back and, you know, flip it up and adjust it, okay, uh, to protect it, to protect that uh, transducer, because I know that that's a, trust me, I just bought one, it's a thousand dollar transducer that's going on there, so you want to protect that. So, I really prefer it as a flip up more than I prefer it as a kick up, but if you still want to use it as a kick up and you're going slower, you most certainly can do that, but I think this is a great design for the flip up method. And so that's why I wanted to mention that and recommend that to you guys. Okay, so let's get into now mounting the transducer piece. So the transducer piece, again, I wanna put it on the, I guess that would be the bottom right of this particular plate. And again, the reason why is when you mount your transducer, your, your transducer is gonna be like that big and if it's that big, then that's where your wire's up and then your wire's gotta kinda, you've gotta design it to where, you, where your wire's going in uh, into the pipe or you're, or you're zip tying the wire here and you're feeding that line back through the post. And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So that's why I wanna mount it there because if I had the option of positioning it, this is where I would wanna position it. So that's where I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill my holes uh, and I put my bolts through it and get it get it all installed and show you kind of how to do that. Okay, so now we have our transducer uh, installed. Once you have that, you'll see you have these uh, these three lines here. You have we're, our transducer here. We're going to hook our transducer onto that piece right there. And then once you do that, in order to keep that on there, you have the knob that came with that system and that's basically going to screw down and lock into that system and of course I like to use mine just straight ahead so you have this guide here matching up with what's on your transducer plate right there so now you have your transducer successfully attached to your uh, to your quick scope to the pole and everything now, you may have a question. You're like, okay, what about all of this flipping wire, man? This, they give you a lot of wire. 
you don't want to if you want to be able to run it up and down and be able to turn it and take advantage of all the things this system has to offer you don't want to try to run the line up through it so or line up beside it you want to run it through it now a lot of people have had concerns uh, about <clears throat> what to do with this wire you've got a couple of options here uh, number one you could actually take this wire and actually zip tie this to the pole and then guide this up through the bottom of the pole and bring it up to the top. If you're going to do that, you want to remove um, that uh, that carriage bolt um, that comes with that bottom collar. So you could just run that up and then put the carriage bolt back in and it'll actually act as a really neat uh, wire guide. Um, so you could totally do it that way. That's one way to do it. If you want to do it a little bit more seamless, um, you can actually drill a hole in this pole if you're going to do that i'm going to show you kind of how to do that that's going to be my preference and i'm probably going to want to run my line right up right about here this is about where i'm going to do mine so what i'm going to do is you're going to need a couple of, of things uh number one i'm going to want to use um a drill a smaller drill bit like a like a one eighth inch uh, drill bit something like that to kind of do my starter hole and then you're going to want a quarter of an inch um, hole um, hole driller okay now I got these this is a warrior brand I got this from Harbor Freight they're they're pretty inexpensive if you're gonna do any kind of like custom work or any kind of anything at all you you want to have a set of these. I bought a whole set. I forget it, even how much it costs, but this is just handy to have, especially if you're doing any work on a kayak or if you're doing any kind of like, you're going to want a hole driller. Uh, so I really recommend you get one of these just to have one, but this is what we're going to use. And this is a inch and a quarter, which is pretty much the size of our electrical head that's going to go up through it. So we're going to go ahead and apply that hole right now. Okay, so I cleaned up the hole here and we're gonna now put this through it. And you're gonna have to kinda play with it a little bit, to kinda work it up. But as you can see, it goes right up through there. Okay, so we're gonna... Okay, so I finally got, <laughs> I finally got all the wire through. Uh, I don't know how many feet that is, but it's a lot. Um, so, so now you have now you have this thing. I think it's pretty daggum seamless now. Uh, mount it to our system. You can you can actually uh, set it up again. I've got mine set up. It, it's probably like between 28 and 30 inches long. And again, I, I chose to do that because I I just didn't want a bunch of extra pipe uh for no reason um again having it through this hole again as you can see it's pretty uh pretty seamless uh that way the, the you're going to be able to turn you're going to be able to turn this and steer this uh pretty easily with no uh with no jam up you can bring it pretty much all the way up to there so you can lift it out of the water pretty much depending on what boat you've got it installed to but for most craft that'll pretty much get it out. And if you need to go up higher, you can actually turn it sideways and actually go all the way up with it. So if you have one of those old oh crap moments, you can like bring it all the way up like that. Okay, so we have uh, our shaft catch piece right here. And as you can see, it, it's, got it, it's got it stored. Um, you have the option of putting this wherever you wanna put it. Like if you wanna put it in front of it, um, if you're worried about your transducer more, you can do that and then swivel that piece out and then drop it into the deploy. Uh, I've got mine uh, in the rear. Uh, again, you, you can run a piece of uh, bungee cord cable, hook to it, uh, customize it however you want to that way. Um, but basically how it works is you just bring this forward, lock it into place, and then just, and then just bring it down bring it back lock it on now i can go back on the water again you have the option of moving this and putting this ahead of you if you want to so, so um just stay tuned for more yak gadget goodness and 
Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to email me at yakgadgethelp at gmail.com. Thanks so much.